Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of Island Spot Sports. And before we get to our guest today, we have a big shout out for, for Living Sisu. Living Sisu is a platform and app that wants to give you all the tools to have success in your sport. Their main objective is to activate your lifestyle. So for active, it's for active people. Enjoy discounts at, at companies like BioSteel, 30% off, BodyLogics, the Goalie Guild, all his books are discounted. Roan, Lululemon for men, 20% off. Online stretching programs with Eccentrics, one full month free. They got super silent massage guns, 20% off those. And it's a great quality. It's way less expensive than a Theragun. And it's a great, it's great quality. So there's so many more discounts that you guys will need to just become a member to see. So they want to provide you with anything you need for success. So come join the community. I'm a part of it. A bunch of other athletes are a part of it. So it's free to join. It takes 20 seconds to have it, to get exclusive offers to your sport. And it's definitely worth worth it. So do do us a huge favor and go sign up for Living Sisu's membership. It's free, 20, takes 20 seconds. So go do it and we'll see you there. Living Sisu is a great company. We uh we know one of the co-founders, Zach Fricali. He's a great guy. He uh he's the co-founder and he does a lot of live streams on Instagram at uh, at Living Sisu and with a bunch of elite athletes and you learn a lot from like the athletes determination, the resiliency, everything to what me made them become successful. So it's been a great experience so far. So Go on. I'm going to leave uh, the link in the description. So uh, go sign up. Yo, welcome back to another episode of On the Spot Sports. I'm Jack. In today's episode, we are joined by a very special guest, current professional hockey player Colin Fitzgerald. Colin is currently signed with the Binghamton Black Bears in the Federal Hockey League, playing in his first year of pro hockey. Colin played three years of ACHA Division II college hockey for Indiana University, played high school hockey at St. Rita High School, and he is also a co-host for a podcast called the Hockey House Podcast, which features college hockey, especially the ACHA. So this is going to be a fun episode, Fitzy. So welcome to the show, Colin Fitzgerald. Thanks for having me, Jack. It's uh, great great to connect with you and uh, looking forward to catching up with you and talking some hockey for a little bit here. Hell yeah, absolutely. This is going to be a blast. But to start things off, like, how are you? Like, I haven't seen you since free agent camp. So how, how have you been and how's bingo? Yeah, we've been we've been trying to connect. We've been going back and forth. Uh, glad we could finally figure out a time to get it to work here. Uh, I've been good. It's been uh, definitely an experience. Uh, lots of experiences. Um, you know, I was supposed to, I had a, a PTO with uh, Vermilion and the SP. Uh, that fell through. And then the, uh, the Binghamton team here, they, they didn't think, you know, I'd be coming. They figured I'd, I'd be at Vermilion. So I actually found out through um, one of my buddies, David Pickle, well, Pickel, it's, it's pronounced Pickel, but we just call him Pickle, uh, another Chicago guy. He was also at our free agent camp um, in Chicago at the edge. And he also got a PTO with Binghamton. I found out through his Instagram story that main camp was starting like in two days here at Binghamton. So I messaged him, messaged him. I'm like, Hey, like, you know, have you heard anything? And he's like, Oh, like, I forgot to tell you, like, you know, camps this Sunday and I'm finding this out on Friday. So hopping in the car Saturday, drove, you know, all the way to Erie, Pennsylvania, stayed the night and then got up and drove the rest of the way Sunday. But it's been an absolute blast. Um, I'm so happy, you know, I came out here. Um, I've met some unreal people, uh, not just, you know, in the, on the hockey team, but the community. Um, it's, yeah, everything's been great. Aside from, from getting hurt, everything's been fun. Yeah, absolutely. So before we start with uh, this season a little bit here, like, can you give our viewers like a little background information on yourself, like when you started playing hockey and like what got you to love the game so much? Yeah, so I, uh, I started playing when I was three years old. Uh, I was in a rink like a few weeks after I was born. Uh, my older brothers, one of which you've had on the pod before, um, they played uh, hockey, you know, growing up. So I just kind of fell in line as the, uh, the, the third brother, you know, you're just, you're going to be playing hockey too. So uh, I think my love for the game really starts with them uh, at a young age. Um, grew up playing in Michigan uh, initially 
And then we moved back here to Chicago, back to Chicago um, when I was in like first grade. So um, I just, you know, I've played baseball and hockey my whole life, but uh, I think I always, you know, deep down really liked hockey a little more. Um, it wasn't always the best. Uh, definitely, you know, going to show up and give you 100%. But, um, you know, grew up playing for the Hawks, Huskies, Fury for a few years in the Chicago area there. And then, like you said, I, I you know, four years at St. Rita High School. And then um, I wanted to keep playing, but my parents, you know, want me to make sure I, I get my education first. So went to Indiana University, played for their club team. And uh, I, I think that's that's a big thing is I've always wanted to to continue playing no matter what what the level was. And um, yeah, I, I think that it all goes back to my brothers from the start, you know, in, in uh, creating that love for the game for me. Yeah, absolutely. So, like, how important are your brothers for, like, your athletic career, especially since, well, since they played hockey, baseball, and, like, they're, they're everywhere, and, like, they're really, you're the younger one. So, like, how is it being the younger one and just having them to look up to? Yeah, so youngest in the family, um, out of everyone, cousins, everything. I'm, I'm the youngest. Uh, so it's, it's definitely helped a lot. Uh, I always had to, cause I, you know, it was, you had to figure out how to play with these big guys if you wanted to partake in yeah. whatever sport was happening. So it was like, you got to up your game somehow. So I do owe a lot to them and their friends. Cause I, I had to figure out a way to play with them. And then, you know, I'm not the tallest guy um, these days out in the fed at all by any mean, but um, you know, I can, I can take a hit. I'll, I'll do whatever just cause I've, you know, since day one, have had to play against the bigger guys and, you know, go up against the, the guys that were not necessarily better than me, but just, um, you know, more mature. Um, so I think, yeah, it's, it's a big part of why I am where I am today. Yeah, absolutely. It's like going up against like these bigger guys and everything, especially in the fed, like what, what is it that makes you able to compete with these guys? Like you, I know you said like your brothers and like their friends helped you, but like in the feds, like it's a different league. So like, what, what what's it like just being the, a smaller guy there and just being able to compete? A lot of the the older guys on the team, uh, my Binghamton team have, have really showed me the ropes and kind of taken me under their wings. Um, my D partner, Tyler Becker, number four, he'll pretty much just go after anyone who tries to hit me. So that's nice to have some protection out there. But uh I, I, my game's kind of built around speed. So I try to, you know, slip checks here when I can. And, um, I, I don't know. I, I always kind of liked it. Just you're the little guy and, um, like the David versus Goliath kind of matchup. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I'd say the older guys here have given me some good tips and, um, I have asked for some, some fighting tips just in case the, uh, the time arrives. You have to drop them. Yeah, I'm I'm uh I'm not looking to get in one, but if I have to, I'm 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 there. That's that's the kind of the player I am, and you know, I'll I'll do it for the boys if I need to. A guy that's gonna do it for the boys, like that's that's all you need. That's that's what it takes uh to really really throw them. Absolutely. Yeah. So going into like this summer, like what did you like have like plans all on to try try to go to the Fed or the SP or like what was that like and just figuring everything out and then like training all summer? I'm not a college. Um, obviously we didn't have a, my senior year got for hockey just got taken because of COVID and everything. So I was pretty depressed to be honest with you, my whole senior year at Indiana, just, um, you know, going to class and everything, not having hockey, uh, had the roller blades. So I was throwing those on anytime I could uh, with my roommate, James Georgiou, who also played for the club team out there. But um, yeah, it was, I was planning on just graduating and that, that would be it with hockey. Uh, I, had, I was a finance major, so get that nine to five stable job and, you know, that would be it for me. But um, I also owe this again, probably to my brothers pushing me always to, you know, try different things and you're young, like give it a shot. And then I've had a lot of people just tell me like, yo, man, like you could have played like D1 NCAA, like what happened? Like, you, you know, you're a good player. So I kept hearing that from a lot of people. Um, and 
like, I don't know, I, I figured I, I might as well take a chance. Um, I was actually originally, I started contacting some people uh, in the summer, right when I got done with school, like asking them, you know, what, what the process is like. Another guy you've had on the pod, Matt Ustaski, yeah. uh, he's a good friend of my beauty. cousins. Yeah. <laughs> so he, uh, I definitely owe a lot of thanks to him over the years. He's helped me with all kinds of things like lifting programs, all kinds of stuff. But um, yeah, he, he gave me some direction and uh, another guy, Stephen Gall, who played in the SP, uh, he helped me out a little bit, but they basically said, you know, just go to these free agent camps and see what happens. Um, you just try to get that PTO and get a, a shot at main camp and then try to make the team out of there. So yeah, this definitely wasn't originally the plan. Um, when I first started looking into, you know, playing somewhere, I was set on my first offer I got was to go play in Netherlands. Um, like Netherlands, I think it was like D3 and then Sweden D2. And for that, I was like, well, I mean, if I have to do it, I'll do it. But I didn't want to be so far away from my family. And then it was also like the money that you'd have to pay to get yeah. like the, the transfer cards, all kinds of stuff. I was like, well, I'll go take my uh, my little paycheck I get in the Fed if I can make it in there. So definitely wasn't the plan, but here I am now. <laughs> yeah, here you, here, here you are in the Fed. And then you go into the the free agent camp with with me where I I was there too in Watertown bingo like what was that what was your experience from your point of view of free agent camp and just learning learning the ropes of pro hockey I was nervous as hell I don't I don't know how you were feeling but I was I was I was yeah I was very nervous um you know I've always I think that's been a big part of my game of why I'm able to succeed usually is because I'm confident in myself uh, willing to like try plays that other guys don't think they could pull off. But that day I was like, uh, just keep it simple. You know, don't, don't mess anything up here. You don't want to look like an idiot. Uh, so definitely really nervous. And then that was the first time I've ever worn a visor. I've always worn a cage my whole life. So I was pretty nervous about that too. Uh, parents have spent a lot of money on the teeth, so yeah. they weren't too happy about the visor, but, um, <laughs> it's funny cause we were doing that. Um, I don't know if you remember the warm up drill we did. The very first drill we did that day, uh, it was like coming around the cones or whatever, yeah, coming yeah. down and shoot. We were just getting the goal. You know, you guys warm the goalies, and uh, one kid just rifles one, and it's just coming. He completely misses the net, and it's coming right at my head, and I duck, <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, well that's a good start." Right, here we go. <laughs> yeah. So, and then you know, now in the Fed, you got you got to wear the visor every night, and there's just blood on the ice and it's just, you know, put, scrape it up with your skate and they come out with the shovels. It's whatever now. So I've gotten used to it, but, uh, still not wearing a mouth guard. Don't tell my parents that, but, um, (laughs) yeah, I was, I was super nervous that day for the, uh, the free agent camp there. Yeah, for sure. It's like, what are some of the things you learned from that, from that camp and just being able to stay confident throughout that, throughout the two days, I think it was, or something like that. And just being able to, eventually sign a PTO with Binghamton? I think I learned to, to pace myself, honestly. Um, we were, we got some, like a lot of ice time in a short amount of time there. Yeah. We were on like maybe 10 or 11 hours of ice time. And, you know, those four periods we were running, um, we, we dropped down. I think we had like 4D on the, the very last day on our team. So I definitely learned to, to you know, like you can't just go all out every shift. Uh, I, I kind of used to do that um growing up just because you had enough guys and it, yeah. the game wasn't as fast as you know the pro pros are so um, pacing myself became a big thing uh, I, I also quickly realized that um you can't just go like coast to coast anymore <laughs> um you know I used to be pretty much pull that off with without any trouble uh even at the college level you wouldn't get much um you know, many people being able to strip the puck from you, but, uh, this level, they got longer reaches guys are, you know, battling for spots. They're gritty. They'll do whatever it takes. So, um, yeah, I think those two things are the biggest. And then lastly, probably just to, uh, not make anyone mad. So you don't have to fight anyone. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And like, just, it was, it was a lot of fun. Like that was probably oh, yeah. one of the, like some of the most fun I've had just cause you're, you're trying out for a pro team. You're being, you're hanging with the boys. Like, and like, I 
connected with so many people in that in the lock in that locker room there and like it was just it was super fun to be a part of and it, and that that like one and a half hour practice to start was was much needed for everyone because they no one was looking at you it so like you could you could mess up as many times as you want get the get the shit out of the way and just be be able to good to, good to go during the games that so then you finally make you make bingo and then you also get uh camp invited to free free agent camp in uh the SB of vermilion county so what was what was that like and just being able to or like what was the process to go to as the sp camp did you do the same thing you did with bingo with bingo just reach out and like they take you yeah so it was another free agent camp it was in fishers indiana probably a three-hour drive from uh where i'm at uh in chicago and um it was a little less grueling than the the bingo watertown camp um but we had less guys so at the same time i mean we did, we did similar stuff, uh, you know, practice the first day and then games the rest of the week. Uh, but again, just surrounded by great people, um, all the, the staff, the Vermilion staff, the coaching staff, front office, they were all, you know, even if you didn't get offered a spot, like, you know, trying to help find a place for you to play, whether it be overseas or in the fed, wherever. Um, I think there the, uh, I didn't see like a serious change in the skill level compared to the, the bingo Watertown camp. Um, it was, it was pretty similar. A few, few guys that had, you know, a little more speed. Um, otherwise it was, it was pretty similar. And, um, but it, I think it was, it was nice to have the, uh, the bingo Watertown camp first, just cause it was like, uh, you know, I got to see how things go and then have the, uh, the SP Vermilion camp. Uh, I think it was like two weeks later. So, I was pretty familiar um, with how things went and it was very similar to the, to the camp we went to. Yeah. And I, I feel like even in Watertown bingo camp, like they, they want, even if you didn't make the team, like they wanted to get you a spot. Like I know before, like I said, I was going to go back to school, like the coaches were willing to help me find a team. So that's, that's good to have. And like, they're, they're just, they want to see you got, they want to see you succeed and just be able to play somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. They're all about, you know, placing guys and continuing to play hockey for as long as you can. Yeah, absolutely. So then after Vermillion's free agent camp, things fell through and you ended up going back to bingo, like you said, and like you had like a two days notice before main camp. So like what was main camp like and just that transition from like free, how free agent camp was to the probably a little bit more speed at main camp. Mm-hmm. Main, main camp at bingo is easily the hardest thing I've ever, ever gone through. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be that hard at all, but easily the hardest thing I've done in my life. I think partly is because I had to just leave my family on such short notice. Like I wasn't prepared. I thought that the camp would be happening a little later in October, but we had it like two weeks before we'd even play our first game against Watertown. And um, you show up, obviously the arena's sick, but um, you're just like overwhelmed when you show up and everyone's, you know, sitting uh, there's different stalls. You have to go around and meet everyone. You don't remember a single person's name after you meet them anyway. Yeah. Uh, we started doing right away. We were on the ice doing two a days, um, uh, practicing twice a day. Uh, we were lifting. I was just, I would get back, you know, to my hotel after we start been going since like 7 AM. Uh, I'd get back at like five, six and just pass out. I, I was just absolutely gassed. Uh, it definitely has paid off for how, you know, the season started. Yeah. Um, I think we're a pretty well-conditioned team, but it sucked going through it. Um, especially I was staying at the Motel 6 for the first few weeks, so that wasn't the best either. But um, it was definitely worth it, uh, but very, very hard. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, what, what was it like just going into two days, like, like usually like you some days you train two a days but when you get to that level like it's a whole different level yeah yeah it was I think what made it like the most crazy was everyone's competing for a spot like nobody's really on the team um you got you know you're at main camp so like you've jumped that first hurdle to get there but you're you're still not guaranteed a spot um so I think that added you know so much each day uh, every time we hit the ice, it's like, you're, you're fighting for your life here. And I, we, we just kept doing like 
full ice five on five, full ice four on four, full ice three on three. Uh, then, you know, one team would go shorthanded and it was basically like a, you know, a, a controlled game every single day, every single time we'd hit the ice. So you're doing that in the morning from, you know, whatever, 11 to one, and then you're back on doing it again from three to five uh, with, you know, lifts in between. And it, it's, it was almost, I, I thought it was kind of crazy. I mean, I see why they did it now, but um, you know, they had like five goalies out there Um not, not, we didn't have enough D seems like there's never enough D, but, uh, yeah. so I got plenty of ice time. Um, they did feed us in between the, the, the two practices. So that was nice. We would go upstairs and, uh, one of the chefs at the rink, he would cook up, you know, whatever we wanted pretty much. So that was nice. Um, I think the, the hardest part of it all was seeing like, you know, you go through two weeks of just like hell with these guys yeah and then the cuts at the end and you, you've really like you've already built some strong relationships with a lot of these guys so I think that was pretty hard for me um each day you know all of a sudden you see a stall that's empty and uh I mean you know it's a business and it is what it is but that was definitely a hard part of uh the whole thing yeah absolutely so then you make it through main camp somehow and then you, and then you, uh, and then you, you played in four games so far for bingo and you picked up three assists. So first three points out of the way. Now you just got to get that goal. But like, what, what has those first four games been like? And just being able to, to play in the Fed and continue playing hockey. It, it's been absolutely surreal. Um, like, you know, like I said, a, a year ago now, I was sitting in my dorm room at Indiana thinking I would just be playing, you know, men's league for the rest of my life. And that, that was it for, you know, really chasing the dream of yeah. playing pro hockey somewhere. So I, it was the first time we, we suited up against Watertown uh, for the first, my first game pro ever. Uh, talk about being nervous. I was very nervous. Um, a lot of the, the older guys could see it and, you know, there's not much you can do is like, you can't just tell a guy to not be nervous, but, um, Hey, don't be nervous. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I, I told myself, you know, just make simple plays. Don't try to do anything special. Just kind of feel out how things are here for the start. Um, so, you know, I was pretty much just playing a safe game, chip and chase kind of thing and not really taking any, uh, taking the puck and rushing it anywhere. But uh, yeah, I've I've gotten a few points. I, I should have a few goals. Uh, number eighteen on our team has set me up so many times, and he's pretty pissed at me. I haven't converted because uh, he's missing out on his apples. So um, yeah, it's just been surreal. I uh, if you told me a year ago that I'd be here, I I don't know if I'd believe you. Yeah, for sure. And then you uh, you then get you then play three shifts in the, in your home opener before you get injured, but like, just like, it was a sold out crowd in Binghamton that day. So like, what were those three shifts? Like, and just seeing, like seeing and hearing the atmosphere around the arena. Cause that, that arena is an AHL arena. Absolutely unreal. Um, I was nervous for that game too, but uh, I've never played in, I've maybe played in front of a few hundred fans. Um, I, I think, think that we was were, like 4,000. Yeah, we were well over something. Yeah, well over 4,000 there. So I've definitely never, never been a part of something like that. Um, honestly, it got like once you stepped on the ice, you didn't hear anything. It was like everything just went quiet around you. Um, during warm ups, the guys made me go without my bucket because they wanted me to show the mullet. Uh, so that was pretty fun. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's like, it's like you're having an out of body experience and you don't really hear anything. And you're just, you're out there playing the game you love with these guys that, you know, you've met um, just over, you know, maybe a little over a month ago and um, wish I could have played a little, little longer, but uh, it was, it was fun to experience. you know, I got to watch the rest of the game, <laughs> sorry, the rest of the game uh, from the side, but um yeah, it was absolutely unreal. Yeah, and just be just being out there, like 
it's it's incredible even though you can't really hear it because like once you once you're focused like everything just disappears and like you can't you just focus on the game and being in the present right then and there but like just going from like the sidelines too like you must be feeling the atmosphere and like seeing how like all the boys are getting energetic out of it and you're getting energetic out of it when you were out there like that yeah. must have been an unreal feeling yeah when I left the ice um well I got hurt on like a little it was just a freak play but it was like a leg check and um I love killing penalties and our 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 guy whoever it was took a penalty like shortly after and they asked if I could you know try to go kill it I was like oh, maybe so I was just gonna like plant myself in front of the net and block shots and I blocked one shot cleared the puck down the ice got off the you know off the ice and I was like I can't go anymore so next whistle I get off and um I got fans, you know, cheering for me. Like these people don't even know who I am and they're clapping for me. And I, I go off and like the way it, they have it set up is you got to walk by like a decent amount of fans to get to our locker room. And all these kids come like running up to the guardrail and they're asking me if I'm all right. And like, I have no idea. I think I just blew out my knee, but the adrenaline's pumping. So I was like, Oh yeah, I'll be fine guys. But, um, and then, you know, I go in and, uh, ice it shower I come back out and there's fans still still sitting right by the guardrail like you're gonna be all right number 15 like you good like these people don't even know who I am and they're, you know they're worried about me so it's it's crazy um the support we get here and then obviously the facility with the arena that we have it's uh really something special yeah absolutely you're gonna have uh number 15 juries all around the all around the rink sometime soon <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. I, I didn't get to pick number 15. They just gave it to me, but it was actually uh, my brother, Ryan, that was his number in high school. So it works out. Yeah. It works out perfectly. But uh, how, how is your knee and how's like rehab going? It's going good. Uh, MRI showed no tears. So um, I was really excited about that. They, they took forever to tell me I was, I was waiting for like 30 minutes at the, the hospital and they finally let me know. So um, it's just a, an MCL strain. They said two to three weeks. Um, this past Saturday was just one week. So uh, I've been working with our trainer, uh, doing all kinds of stuff. The, uh, the stims, um, heating it, all, all kinds of stuff. So um, we got a big series this weekend against Port Huron, but I don't know if I'll be ready. We'll see. If not, I'm aiming for next Wednesday. We got uh, Danbury coming in, so that's that's the uh, the hope. But um, it's you know obviously since it's not torn, it's it's going to be all right. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll be you'll be out there sooner sooner or later. Whenever, hopefully, hopefully sooner. But you'll you'll get out there within the next few weeks for sure. Yeah, long season too, so no reason to, to push it. Yeah, absolutely. So, like, throughout, like, your first four games, like, you've had a bunch of different experiences. Like, what's been, like, your welcome to the Fed moment? I'd have to say our very first game, um, our goalie, Harley White, was starting. And I want to – it was either – no, it was the second period. He, uh, he pushes a guy down uh, on Watertown. The guy turns around and starts coming at him. And our goalie just – drops his, his stuff and pulls off the mask. I'm like, what is going on right now? And <laughs> him and uh, him and number seven on Watertown just go at it. Player versus goalie. Uh, I thought I was, I was playing, you know, NHL, the video game. And um, my D partner, I wasn't out there, but my D partner was out there and he's watching it. Like you can see him on the video. So he's like unsure of if he should like, you know, jump in and be the third guy in or what he should do. And he just let him go. And, um Harley Harley hung in there he's he's a little guy and he hung in there with uh one of their pretty tall guys and pretty good fighters so props to him but I was like you know holy crap what what is going on what did I get into so that was definitely a uh a wake-up call for me yeah day, day one in the fed and we already got a goalie fight out of, out of there. <laughs> we also had a an exhibition game against Watertown during main camp like right at the end of main camp we pretty much had the team sorted out and uh, we went to Watertown um, just for an exhibition game and we got beat pretty good I think it was like eight to four or something like that but there was five or so seconds left in the game and faceoff was in Watertown zone and I could see they just sent out like 
the, all their tall guys. Um, all the and tough they took, guys. Well, all, yeah, all the tough guys ready to fight. And But then they took a timeout, and they were already up by, like, four. I was like, okay, this is weird. And my coach, um, he sends out me with uh, David Pakel. And we, we, it was just like a bunch of little guys. I'm like, we're, we're about to get wrecked. And Pickle comes over to me. He's like, what's about to happen here, Fitz? I'm like, I don't know, but I think it's about to be a line brawl. Like, just grab someone. <laughs> so n- nothing ended up happening. But Pickle told me later, he's like, you scared the crap out of me, Fitz. Like, I thought I was going to have to fight. I'm like, well, welcome to the Fed. You might have to. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's a funny one because – you never know what to expect. Like a line yeah. brawl could happen any every game if it yeah. could. Yeah, pretty much our this past Saturday against Watertown was almost a, a line brawl. One of one of their Watertown guys came out of the penalty box after he was already in there and started fighting some more. So it's uh it's crazy. Ryan wants so, me to my brother Ryan wants me to, to take some lessons to, to be able to defend myself. So it's a war zone in the Fed right now. Yeah, yeah. It's uh it's 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 good and bad. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Good for the fans. <laughs> yeah, that that's for sure. But I want to I want to take this time and uh, get into like your college days a little bit here. So, like, what was your experience uh, going into Indiana University and playing for three years? And like, what, what was the process like to to commit to Indiana University? Yeah. So, um, coming out of high school, I knew I wanted to keep playing uh, hockey somewhere. Honestly, my biggest regret is not going and playing juniors. Um, there were teams that wanted me to play. I just, I don't know, didn't do it. I uh, wanted to get college started, but any kid out there who's unsure, go play juniors first. Um, you'll always regret not trying it. Yeah. But um, I originally wanted to get into University of Michigan because that's where my oldest brother, Brendan, went, and he played um, on their club team there, had a, had a blast. So that was my plan, but uh, I did not get – um, like the direct admit into their business school and I did it in Indiana. So I was like, all right, well, Indiana seems cool. Uh, I was the only kid from my high school going there. So I didn't really know anyone and um, didn't know what to expect either. Uh, both school wise and hockey wise. I heard they had a good business business school. Um, it, it turns out that it's a pretty, pretty big party school. I was not expecting that, but uh, they, they do have a good time down there in Bloomington and um, the, the, uh, the, f- the first time I meet, you know, some guys on the, the hockey team, we had a call out meeting my freshman year and the, uh, the coach, he had, he had seen me in a uh, showcase at Pittsburgh for the, um, it was like the, this high school thing where they pick uh, some, you know, like the top high school players yeah. or whatever in Illinois and you go represent your state out in Pittsburgh. And that was where I first talked to the Indiana coach. And then I see him again uh, here at the call out meeting. And um, it, again, it's just like, you know, you form a bond with all these guys and in a very short amount of time, none of them get cut because it's a club sport. They got to take everyone. Yeah. But um, I think the funniest, funniest thing with that, uh, they, they don't tell you that and maybe I shouldn't even be telling everyone, but they don't tell you in Indiana that the rink that's five minutes from the campus doesn't open until November every year. So oh. you're going to be driving 45 minutes to Columbus, Indiana, and that's where you'll be practicing and playing your games for the first, you know, two or three months, whatever it is. And you find that out right when you show up at the call out meeting, but you know, it's like, they basically already, they've already got you. Like, you know, they, yeah. you're already going to be on the you're team. On so. the team at that point it's like oh nice you know they don't they they know better than to tell people that beforehand but uh yeah. it's it's whatever you know it's guys that want to play and continue playing that's that's pretty much all club players love the game so they're willing to do you know whatever it takes to to keep playing but um yeah that was that was pretty much how I ended up at Indiana just kind of um not like set on going there from childhood days it just kind of happened and um again great experience and met a lot of great people yeah absolutely so then you go right into the right into the thick of things and play your first year at indiana university for the club teams like what, what were some of your expectations that you wanted to get out through that first year 
or throughout like all four years of your college career? I called my brother Brendan the night of the call out meeting. I was like very worried that I was wasn't even gonna be like a starter on the team. Yeah. Like I would just get scratched every night. I'm like, I don't know like what's gonna happen here. They, they said they're gonna take like 30 guys, but only dress, you know, 20, 21, yeah. whatever it is. And um that was far from the truth. Um it, it ended up, you know, working out. Um so yeah, I, I think I expected. I expected, you know, to, to not be a, a top guy like I was in high school, um, you know, right off the bat, but um, things worked out and I wasn't expecting it to be as competitive as it was. And I think that's like a big thing, big thing people don't understand. They hear club hockey and they, uh, they think like, oh, you know, like intramural, like these guys are just here to have fun and yeah. Don't get me wrong. There's, there's teams like that out there, but there's, there's plenty of teams that, you know, are serious about winning. They, they want to go to regionals. They want to go to nationals every year and they're willing to put in the work. Um, I mean, we, we wouldn't do it. You know, we're paying, you pay to play or you're, you're paying a good amount of money. You spend plenty of time um, at the rink doing stuff away from the rink missing classes so it's it's definitely a lot more competitive than I thought it would be and I was all for it I, I loved it so I wasn't expecting that but definitely happy that it, it was like that yeah absolutely and you're just like you said you didn't you didn't think you're gonna play or get that starting role but you ended up playing 27 games 29 and 27 games putting up very respectable respectable numbers with 14 points 22 points on 33 points your last year so like you got you got that playing time for sure it's so like what are some of the things you learned from from playing ACHA division two hockey and just being able to even though you didn't think you were gonna make that starting be the starting role but like you ended up playing almost every single game yeah I think the, the biggest thing I learned was to always bet on yourself you know, there, there's no reason I, I should have ever thought like I wouldn't be a guy there. Or, yeah. You know, I wouldn't wouldn't have a starting role and um, I'll always, always bet on yourself uh, no matter what. Um, I, I, it's it's funny because I showed up here to main camp and, uh, you know, the, those thoughts start creeping back in like, oh, you know, what what if I don't make the team? What if I make the team, but I don't play every night, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then you think back to you know, you're having the same thoughts you did when you were, you know, going to play ACHA at Indiana and, um, you know, see how that, that, that worked out just fine. So, uh, yeah, I, th I think that was definitely a big lesson, um, is to, you know, it's pretty cliche, but believe in yourself because there's, there's no reason not to. Yeah. If no one's going to believe in yourself, just believe in yourself. Cause like, if you believe in yourself, everyone else is going to believe in you. Yeah. And, and always, always know that you know, if things don't work out, you figure something else out, you, you transfer, you know, to another school and you play there, you, you know, get traded to another team, whatever it is, it's, it's, it'll always work out, but it, it won't work out unless you, you give it a try. Yeah, exactly. hundred percent. And like, you always hear about these, like when you go play ACHA club and like you all, you hear about all these stories uh, what are some uh, some good stories you have from playing uh, ACHA? Oh boy, <laughs> how much time you got? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, cool. Well, we'll start with my coach freshman year got fired midway through because um, he had, he had got like a DUI or something. And then he went on to coach uh, the that Battle Creek Fed team. I oh, forget the what the Rumblebees or whatever. Yeah. Yep. And he they went like what one forty four or something. They had forty four. Yeah. yeah. They just lost like every game. Uh, he got fired after they were started off like zero and eight. So that that was my my first college coach I ever experienced. Um, We've had the the Zamboni breakdown plenty of times. We had uh, our coach had to hop up and drive the Zamboni uh, 
or I mean, a, a player had to hop up and drive the Zamboni in between periods. So he would oh. take off one of his skates and get up and drive it around. <laughs> um, geez, there's, there's so much stuff that happened in ACJ, but, um, Bus is breaking down and it, the stories don't end. And that's that's why it's funny that, you know, the buses are bre- breaking down here in the Fed and we're driving ourselves here in the Fed because it's like, I'm used to all of this. This is just the ACHA all over again. Like, I'm ready for this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, but like, those make for the best stories and the best memories because, like, when you look back on it, like, you have all these funny stories that you could look back to and just like, just shoot the show with the boys when, yeah. when you, when you guys get older and it's, it's just a, it's just a fun time. Definitely. Definitely. That's, that's what a lot of the older guys keep saying here. Whenever, you know, something goes wrong, it's like, Oh, well, you know, that'll be a good one to talk about in a few years. And so, yeah, that, I think that's all hockey guys are, you know, good with that. And 